I'm going to do things a bit different this time. So instead of seeing my ugly mug at the beginning, middle, and end of these videos, I'm going to show you the vast library of footage, video, and pictures that I have of animals that have taken over the years. So I hope you enjoy this as we go through the animal kingdom. Kingdom Animalia, a group of life that has not only benefited humanity, but has amazed us with their great diversity. When most people name their favorite animal, they point to a mammal or bird, but animals encompass any multicellular organism that moves at some point in their lifetime and consumes other organisms by internal digestion. Mammals and birds make up only a tiny slither of the kingdom, which also includes sponges, corals, parasitic worms, insects, and whatever the heck this thing is. It's a tardigrade, by the way. One of the most resilient life forms known to exist. This simple pond critter can survive desiccation, low oxygen, extreme heat, and cold. It is truly a badass. Animals have been in existence for 600 million years, which is about 13% of Earth's history. Thus far, 1.4 million species exist, but estimates go up as high as 6.8 million. The vast majority of animals are insects at 925,000 species, of which one-third of them are just beetles. I suppose even nature loves the beetles. Join me as we discover the characteristics of animals, classification, amazing anatomical and physiological features found in not other groups of life, and the amazing diversity of the known animals of our world. So what makes an animal an animal? While animals are highly diverse, they have the following characteristics in common. They are eukaryotic, multicellular organisms like plants, many fungi, and protists, but differ from those groups by being modal at some point in their life. Yes, even sponges, which are sessile, move as larvae to quote-unquote plant themselves to the appropriate substrate. Animals are heterotrophic, meaning they ingest food internally using specialized digestive organs and or enzymes. Fungi also utilize digestive enzymes, but must secrete these outside their tissue as they grow on other living things. Most Aww. animals reproduce sexually, with offspring developing through a series of stages that lead to a determinant body plan, the adult. Body plan refers to the shape of an animal. Since animals are multicellular, they are not just made of many cells, but of tissues that perform specialized tasks. There are four main types of tissues in animals. Nervous, which transmit nerve impulses and process information. Muscular, which help organs and the whole organism move. Connective tissue, which helps to provide structural support, such as in bone and muscular tendons, but they can also transport nutrients and waste, such as in blood. Finally, Epithelial tissue is located on the outermost layers of organs to protect underlying, more fragile tissue below. Epithelial tissue can also secrete and absorb substances, such as the lining of the intestines absorbing nutrients and skin secreting sweat. Most animals are diplontic, having a diploid dominant life cycle, with only the gametes being haploid. Most animals also reproduce sexually, but asexual forms of reproduction exist in most groups. For many animals, including mammals, sexual reproduction is the only way to make new individuals. This requires a male and female to combine the gametes during fertilization. Animals have vastly different sizes of gametes. Males make small... <laughs> Please don't laugh. Yet modal sperm while females produce large but sessile eggs. When combined, they produce the zygote, and if that zygote survives, it will develop into an offspring. Fertilization can be internal, which is common for land animals to prevent gametes from drying out, or external, which is common in aquatic animals. Remember that gametes must remain in order to protect the DNA within. Offspring can resemble miniature adults, such as in mammals, or they may go through a series of stages of different body plans as seen in insects and amphibians. 
The advantage of the latter lifestyle is that the parents and offspring have differing habitats and resources, preventing the two groups from competing with one another. Asexual reproduction, while not as common in animals, does occur. In sessile aquatic animals like corals, sea squirts, you like that one, and sponges, fragmentation occurs. This happens when a portion of the animal breaks off and it forms another individual. In many invertebrates and in whiptail lizards, parthenogenesis can occur whereby unfertilized eggs hatch into offspring that are identical to the parent. Animals are classified by both morphology, or body plan, and developmental characteristics. Body symmetry, arrangement of embryonic tissues, the presence or absence of a body cavity, or an opening in the body to house organs, and how the embryo develops are the main ways to classify the different groups of animals. Perhaps you have first learned of symmetry in elementary school. As you may recall, this is the ability to divide a shape evenly across one or more planes. Body symmetry comes in three types. Asymmetry, which is no particular pattern of symmetry, pretty much only found in sponges. Radial symmetry, which refers to circular or barrel in shape and which, like circles, can be divided into many different planes. And this is more exclusive to jellyfish and certain sea stars, echinoderms, and those groups. And bilateral symmetry, where the animal can only be divided into one plane that splits the animal into equal left and right halves. And this is representative of most of the animal kingdom. In bilateral organisms, the front half of the animal is called the anterior side. The back half is called the posterior side. The back of the organism is called the dorsal side, and the belly is the ventral side. During early stages of embryonic development, animals form germ layers. These germ layers eventually form into the organ systems that we have. Sponges lack tissues altogether, so they are excluded from this form of classification. In phylum Cnidaria, which consists of jellyfish, corals, and anemones, they contain two germ layers, ectoderm and endoderm. This is termed diploblastic. The ectoderm, which is the outer germ layer, eventually becomes the integument and nervous system, and the endoderm becomes the digestive system. The opening in the middle is the digestive cavity, or opening in which food will pass through. You might also notice the non-living layer in diploblast. This is what makes the jelly in jellyfish. It simply separates the two germ layers. Triploblastic animals encompass the rest of the animal kingdom, and in addition to the ectoderm and endoderm, they have a mesoderm sandwiched in between. The mesoderm eventually develops into the other body systems, such as the muscular, skeletal, lymphatic, etc. Amongst triploblastic animals, they can be divided into three groups based on the presence or absence of a coelom. A coelom is a body cavity or opening in the body that derives from mesoderm tissue and allows organs to grow and move around. In humans, we have several body cavities, such as our thoracic cavity holding our lungs and our heart, abdominal cavity with much of our digestive organs, and cranial cavities for our brain. The coelom is usually filled with fluid to help lubricate the organs as they slide past one another. They provide cushioning and shock absorption, as well as allowing for the exchange of gases, nutrients, and waste via diffusion and osmosis. Bilateral triploblastic animals can be divided into three categories. First are the acelomates, which lack a coelom altogether. This is only found in flatworms. Eucelomates have a true coelom that is completely enveloped around mesoderm tissue. Most bilateral animals have this. Pseudocelomates have a false coelom that is sandwiched in between mesoderms and endoderm tissue. Only roundworms have this. Even amongst the bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic eucelomates, did you get all that? They can be divided into two groups based on the differences in the early development of the embryo, specifically the formation of the digestive system. The digestive system starts at the mouth and ends in the anus. The organs involved in the digestion are between these points, such as the esophagus, the stomach, and the intestines. Protostomes, which include arthropods, mollusks, and annelids, and in English, they're creepy crawlies, shellfish, and segmented worms, form the mouth first and the anus last. 
In addition, the coelom forms by hollowing out between the spaces of the ectoderm and endoderm. Deuterostomes, which include the echinoderms and chordates, or sea stars and their relatives, as well as vertebrates like us, form the anus first and mouth last. Uh, sorry about that. And then we form the coelom by pouches pinching off of the endoderm tissue. Of course, animal diversity is far more complex than everything mentioned, but it is a good starting point to explain the progress of evolution in animals. In our next video, we will review the most ancient of animals, Phylums porifera and cnidaria.